Hi everyone and welcome to part 2 in our photo mode mini series covering how to create a photo mode for your video games in Unreal 4. In the last episode we set up the camera to be playable and controllable by the player. In this episode we're going to set up the ability to take pictures and display them on the screen as we take them. So join us right now and we'll get started. So we've got our camera working. Uh, we can switch between player camera and the photo mode camera. And we need to be able to take pictures now with this camera. Now the way you take pictures in a game is by using a render target. So because we are doing multiple pictures possibly, we need to be dynamically creating these render targets with a scene capture component. So let's go into our photo mode camera and take a look at what we can do here. So in the component list, we've currently got a normal camera. We also need to have at the same location as this, the scene capture component. Uh, capture component 2D. Yep, and it should be in exactly the same place as our normal camera. Okay, I'm going to go back to the event graph. So now we have to do the input to allow us to take the picture. And I'm going to do this with left click. So we'll do a left mouse button event. And when we do this, we need to take our scene capture component here and tell it to capture an image. Now, what this means is we don't want it to capture images all the time, okay? Otherwise, normally it would be just right into a texture 24-7, which we don't want to do. We only want to do it once when we click the button. So when you go to your scene capture component settings on the right-hand side here, you want to go down to the bottom and we have to change a few settings here. Uh, the first thing we need to do is give it the texture target. We're going to go to the drop-down here and choose a render target. And I'm going to give this a, in the photo mode folder. The name uh, current photo render target. And so this is the texture file that it's going to write to. So when we click the button, it's going to write what it sees to this texture. The composite mode we want set to overwrite because we want it to overwrite what was previously there before. And then we want to um, take the capture every frame and turn that off and capture every, uh, capture on movement, turn that off as well. We want to tell it when to capture. And to do that, the way you do it is you, with the reference to the capture component, drag that out and do capture scene. So when I click the button, it's going to write to that texture and that texture will be there in the file, files for us. So let's test that out and see that working. If I just close this and keep an eye on this thumbnail here. So this thumbnail is black at the moment because it's got nothing on it. Let's hit play and go to camera mode and then hit C. This will now draw to this texture. You're not going to see it here, but you can see it down near the thumbnail. Okay. So it's working. Okay, so what we need to do is dynamically create these and store them as individual render targets. So we need to create these dynamically. So go to your photo camera. And before we capture the scene, we need to tell it to create this render target and then assign it to the capture component. So create render target 2D. Here you get to choose the size of it. Um, so this will be the resolution of the camera picture you want. Uh, and for this, we'll keep it very simple. And I'm gonna keep it um, 1080 by, uh, sorry, 1920 by 1080 as the width and height. Uh, clear color is black because it basically just wipes it clean and there's no data on it then. And we'll tell it to, um, we won't tell it to auto generate mipmaps in this resolution because this resolution won't support it. So there's no point. And then on the return value here, we need to set that to our scene capture component. So we get that out here and do set scene, uh, sorry, set render target. Uh, no, what was it called? Hang on, I can't remember what it's called. It was called texture target. Yeah. And we plug that in like so. And then we take it to capture scene. So this is going to create a new render target each time and store it for us. Okay. Now this render target we also want to save in memory. At the moment it won't just create loads of them. You won't see loads appear here. So for example, go in here. 
you're not going to see anything happen. Yeah, this is all stored in memory. It doesn't export it at all or anything like that. So we do need to keep track of these texture targets that we get middle uh, get out of here. Um, but we have got the capture scene component working now. So next thing we will do is display the picture we've taken onto the screen. Therefore, then the player can choose whether or not they want to save it to their hard drive and then do whatever they like with it. So here we're going to come out of here and create a material for our render target to use. So let's go back to our photo mode folder and create a material. And this will be a photo material. I'm going to right click on this and uh, not right click on it, so double click on it and change the material domain from surface here to user interface. That way we can use it for our screen. Now for this, we want to make a texture parameter. So you do that by holding down T and left clicking, and then right click on this, convert to parameter. And we'll call this one photo render. And quite simply, we're just going to plug that onto the final color there. Now this will need a default value. So just go into defaults and just add the one we made earlier. So we'll do photo render target. And that's what we really need to do to this. Um, later on, we'll go through how to do um, little effects on it. And you can change things like color and grading it and things like that. Uh, that'll go through all on this. But for now, we just want to show the image on the screen. Close this. And let's go back here. And I want to right click on this photo material and create a material instance. And we're doing this because we need to change its properties. We need to be able to change the dynamic part of it, which is the photo itself. So with that added there, we're going to create a widget to appear on our screen. Create widget blueprint. Photo display. Hold it and open it up. I'm going to keep it quite simple. In this case, we're just going to drag in a border. Got a camera panel here, and we're going to put this at the bottom somewhere, put your bottom center, and increase the size of it to be. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's do 1920 by 1080. Now, obviously, you don't want it that big, but what you can do then is just divide that by however many you want. So, if you divide by two, it gives us this size here. Divide by two, there you go. Okay, so with that there. I'm then going to go into my border and drag an image into it. And the image here, we're going to choose from our brush and choose the photo material instance. Oh. Now, to make it look a bit more photo like, I'm just going to give it a little border around the edges. So, on the border here, we're going to go to the padding and the content here. And just add a little padding around it or the whole edge of 20. That brings it in a little photograph. Let's just rise this up a little bit in the Y. There we are. Okay. And we're going to go back to our photo camera. And on here, when we create the render target, we need, need to send that over to our material and uh, sorry, our uh, widget and, and create that widget. So that widget needs to have a, this texture target here as a variable. So if you hover over this, um, okay, are you? So you see, if you click on it, it's a texture target, a texture render target here. So that'd be the type we need on our widget. So let's go to our widget here, go to graph and add new variable for this one, photo render. And this would be a texture target extra render target 2d and you want to make this editable and exposed on spawn so when it creates this we have the option to plug this in now on the pre-construct we want to take that photo render choose get and we need to assign it to our images brush so we're going to take the image out and then from there we're going to get the dynamic material, which is our instance. This then allows us to change the instance uh, parameter for the photo, which was called photo render. So if I go back to here and this return value, we can set 
texture parameter value name it photo render and the value will be this photo render here this variable okay, compile and save okay so next we're going to go back to our photo camera and do create widget create widget and choose our photo display and you can see here it's asking for the photo render if you don't see this here it just means you haven't ticked the expose on spawn the ticket and it should then appear here we're going to plug in our texture target into the photo render and then we're going to tell it to uh on uh, put it onto screen so we'll do that after we capture the scene do add to viewport Okay, so if I go back into the game, go into my camera mode, hit F click, we've now got a picture of our scene. Okay, so the last bit we're going to do here is we're going to add a little simple animation to the spawn of the camera uh, photo and make it dis uh, disappear after a certain amount of time. So let's go into our photo display widget and with the image 64 I've got here, I'm just going to rename this one, call it photo image. So next we're going to go down to animations, choose new animation, and it's going to be take photo. And on here we need to add in a white border over the top of it so we can fade that in and out. So I'm going to go to my photo image here, right click, wrap with overlay. The photo image here we need to tell to fill up the whole space by stretching it across and down. And on the overlay we're going to drag a border that will also be stretched across and down. You can see it covers the whole entire thing. On the take photo, we're going to take this border and add it as a track. And then we're going to change its render opacity. So it's going to start off as one, and then over time, it needs to go down to zero. Okay, so it flashes white and then calms down. Okay, so that's our simple animation. We need to call this take photo on the graph. Let's go to the construct event. And you should see your animation in the left hand side column. We'll drag that out and do simply play animation. Pop that in and that's it. Compile and save. Then we're going to do a timer to say how long this should last for. So on the play animation, we're going to drag that out and do set timer by event. We're going to say five seconds. Event here, do custom and do uh, destroy photo. And for that, we just do simply remove from parent. That's it. So let's go back to the game and test this out. So running around the game, hit C. I've got photo mode now, and I left click. There it appears. Again. So there we have our camera. Now at the moment this isn't being set to a camera roll, or we're not saving it to the, uh, the player's hard drive, but we'll go through that in uh, later episodes. And that brings us to the end of part two. We have now created a successful camera that can take pictures and show them on the screen. However, we're not gonna stop there. We will now want to go ahead and show all the pictures you've taken with your camera in a gallery. So in the next episode, part three, we can set up our gallery for our camera roll so you can see the pictures you have taken on the screen. If you want to watch that next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can catch all my videos early from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the little notification bell as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.